Do you personally plan to fly on all three of these flights? Well, I hope so. Um, but we gotta we gotta start with the first one, which is Polaris Dawn, and we have uh, some pretty important objective, objectives we're looking to accomplish with that mission. And if it goes right, then then we move on to the next one. When did these discussions about Polaris begin, and how did they evolve to three total? Yeah, I mean, so really, what you're talking about is a partnership here with SpaceX for essentially the first private space program, which is exactly what NASA was hoping for when they commissioned this whole commercial space industry, you know, some 10, 15 years ago. Uh, the conversations began, I'd say, uh, about about six to nine months ago, uh, just prior to the launch of Inspiration Four, which was the first all civilian mission to orbit. And the idea was, what building blocks should we be looking towards to get from where we are today? to a vehicle like Starship, which is going to be the vehicle that will take human beings back to the moon. And if we can get to the moon, we can get to Mars with it. And, and that's where the Polaris program came up with, where these tech demonstration building block missions that will take us deeper into space than we've gone before, test out new technology that will ultimately de-risk uh, Starship, which is like our generation's version of the Saturn V rocket, again, to take us to the moon and, and ideally to Mars. You are talking about de-risking going farther into space than ever before, and most of us regular Earthlings, to, that, to us that sounds terrifying. How much additional risk is involved when you go out farther into space, and how do you manage that? I mean, certainly there, there are, you know, elevated levels of risk when you do things that haven't been done before or haven't been done in, in 50 or 60 years on a new vehicle. Um, but you're also talking about, you know, some of the most talented, you know, engineers of our time right now. I mean, you think about the team at SpaceX, who's also drawing on 50, 60 years of NASA experience. Um, you know, they're the ones who are landing rockets on ships in the ocean. They've done it nearly 100 times. No one else has done it once over the last seven years. Um, you know, they're real pioneers and they're bringing science fiction to reality. So this partnership with the Polaris program is bringing all those talented minds to bear. Uh, and that's how we're going to get comfortable being able to execute on these really ambitious objectives, but being able to do it in a, in a safe way. What's the timeline? When do you think you'll be flying on Starship? Is it two years, five years from now? Sooner? Late? Longer? <laughs> You know, it's it's hard to say. Uh, you know, Elon just gave his update last week uh, on the Starship program next to a fully stacked Starship and booster, which is huge. It's 450 feet off the ground uh, with the idea that it'll launch its first uncrewed orbital test flight this year, um, which is the same time we will launch our first crewed mission of uh, Polaris Dawn. My guess is we're going to make a lot of progress off that mission, which will inform our next mission in 2023. And ideally, by the time you get to 2024, uh, we're in a good place with, with Starship. But we're going to learn an awful lot with the Polaris program. SpaceX team is going to learn an awful lot with these uncrewed test flights of Starship. And, and ideally, they'll kind of converge at the right time in, uh, you know, over the next couple of years. How much are you talking to Elon personally as you're moving through these negotiations and plans and you know, building this future way out there? So, so Elon was definitely involved in the Polaris partnership. I mean, we we discussed the high level objectives that we thought would be important in order to, you know, ultimately arrive at the point that Starship is ready for crewed flight. So, for example, Polaris Dawn's mission objectives, Elon was instrumental in in crafting, which is we should go farther and deeper into space than we've gone before, and and learn from the Van Allen radiation belts that you're ultimately going to have to fly through to get to the moon and and, and to Mars. And use that to inform countermeasures. Like we'll, we'll be wearing, uh, you know, radiation uh, vests. We'll have a, a number of sensors and experiments. It's like we should do an EVA because if we're getting to the moon and Mars, we're going to need suits, and not suits for four or five people, but potentially thousands or tens of thousands of people. So there's a lot to learn in that protocol and suit development. And we got to communicate over the speed of light with Starlink. We need that type of connectivity because even with the fastest capabilities we have today, it's a 15 to 20 minute long transmission each way from Mars. So. That's what we came up with, you know, for this first mission. You know, imagine what we're going to learn from that to inform the second mission and then then flying Starship, uh, you know, at the conclusion of the program. You're also a, sh a shrewd businessman in your work as CEO and founder of Shift4 Payments. Give us an idea of how much this total program will cost and what's the cost of a ticket? Yeah, so I mean, these are all developmental uh, tech missions. So the, 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 these aren't open for you know commercial sale at all. Uh, this is what you know Polaris program and SpaceX are doing in order to ultimately arrive at Starship, which at some point could be the 737 
that opens up uh, you know, commercial spaceflight potentially for everyone. You can have up to 100 people fitting on a Starship. In fact, a Starship has more habitable volume in a single vehicle than the entirety of the International Space Station. So the idea is if we get this right, it certainly opens up space for, for everyone, which is a big part of the, the SpaceX vision. In terms of the cost, we, we, we never disclose that. This is a privately funded space program. Uh, but what I, I will say is that I think what private industry can accomplish, how we can allocate capital to make progress, um, is substantially better than, than how the government can do it, where we can achieve great things quicker for the benefit of, of really all of humankind. And you're not just seeing it in, in the space industry, but obviously in other great private endeavors.